Pollution and toxic substances cause at least 9 million premature deaths every year. Exposure raises the risks of cancer, heart disease, respiratory illnesses, birth defects, and lifelong impacts on neurological development. The toxification of Earth is intensifying. Hundreds of millions of tons of chemicals are dumped annually into our air, water, and soil. Production of chemicals is expected to double by 2030 and triple by 2050. Unless ambitious, urgent, and worldwide action is taken, exposures will increase, health will worsen, and human rights violations will multiply. An extensive body of international environmental law addresses pollution and toxic substances, including the Basel, Rotterdam, Stockholm, and Mid-Amatic Conventions. But the effectiveness of these instruments is undermined by major gaps and weaknesses. While all humans are exposed to pollution and toxic substances, the burden of contamination falls disproportionately upon the shoulders of individuals and communities already enduring poverty, systemic discrimination, and marginalization. These communities are less likely to have access to environmental information, to participate in environmental decision-making, or to have access to justice and effective remedies when their rights are jeopardized or violated. Some communities suffer exposure to pollution and toxic substances that is so extreme they are described as sacrifice zones. This dark phrase originated in the Cold War era when it was used to describe areas rendered uninhabitable by nuclear weapons tests. People suffer devastating physical and mental health consequences and human rights violations as a result of living near the most heavily polluting and hazardous facilities, including open pit mines, smelters, petroleum refineries, chemical plants, coal-fired power stations, oil and gas fields, steel plants, garbage dumps, and hazardous waste incinerators. The people who inhabit sacrifice zones are exploited, traumatized, and stigmatized. They're treated as disposable, their voices ignored, and their dignity and human rights trampled upon. Sacrifice zones exist in states rich and poor, north and south, east and west. Pollution and toxic substances affect the enjoyment of the rights to life, health, water, food, housing, cultural rights, the rights of the child, and the rights of indigenous people. The recent recognition of the right to a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment should mark a turning point in society's approach to pollution and toxic substances. From a human rights perspective, achieving a non-toxic environment is an obligation, not an option. The framework principles on human rights and the environment clarify state obligations. States must monitor pollution, use the best available science, make information on toxic substances freely available, engage the public, especially disadvantaged populations, in decision-making, ensure access to justice and effective remedies, require environmental and human rights impact assessments, incorporate gender equality, and protect human rights defenders. Current approaches to managing the risks posed by pollution and toxic substances are failing. The result is a systematic denial of dignity and human rights. States and businesses must vigorously pursue zero pollution and the elimination of toxic substances. States must prevent the creation of sacrifice zones and take urgent action in existing sacrifice zones by dramatically decreasing pollution, by remediating contaminant sites, and providing medical treatment. A human rights-based approach to preventing exposure to pollution and toxic substances could save millions of lives. If the promises of the right to a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment and the 2030 Agenda are to have any real meaning, people living in sacrifice zones must be prioritized, not left behind. Governments, businesses, and citizens must make the systemic and transformative changes required to fulfill the Sustainable Development Goals and achieve a cleaner, greener, healthier future for all.